award-winning national security border security investigative reporter for TV, radio, and the print media. She's covered the news with an outside the Beltway perspective. Her experience as an investigative journalist ranges from national security issues like uh, Git Modes, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, 9-11 trial, immigration, foreign policy, uh, TV correspondent for CW6 News, San Diego, as well as One America News Network. And she's on YouTube. She's streaming live at Periscope, and she's streaming live at Facebook, and she's just, oh, she's everywhere. Kimberly, how are you? I'm fine. How about yourself, Jack? All right. Let me ask you a very important question. It's been bugging me all day. You were searching for a golf ball that went into the rough, weren't you? You were not doing exercises on law. No, that's not true. I was actually a little bit of a backup as people get off work. They usually try to get at least nine holes in at the golf course, I being no different. But I didn't want to sit there and do nothing. And I used to be a gymnast, so I decided I would start practicing a little bit of my old balance beam routine. So that's actually on like a, a small, it's actually a little narrower than the four inches that you usually have. So I was like pleased with myself. I was able to like do a few things. So it was yeah. pretty <laughs> I could have, uh, I could have put a comment, you know, like the squirrel pulled her over for driving under the influence. <laughs> you know, driving golf course to get, it. yeah. Anyway, uh, very, yeah, very serious report here from Kimberly. It's entitled, "Is it hat 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 or leak 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 with the election meddling in Florida? Is it one or the other, Kimberly? That's the big word." Yeah, um, I've done a little more in, um, investigating into this story that we uh, talked about extensively last week on your show. And the senator, um, Mr. Nelson, is continuing to double down on this um, accusation that the Florida system is being hacked by the Russians with absolutely zero proof of the, of the, you know, the fact that anybody broke into the elections. In fact, now the state officials are coming out and, and accusing the senator of, you know, tactics to stir up votes for himself because now he's in a very tight re-election race. And he, for the first time in, you know, a few decades or so, he's going to have a fight and he may not become, he may not continue to be the senator in Florida. Yeah, and you say that Nelson is alleging that Russian agents have tried to penetrate Florida's election system. Uh, is this? You know, and I have to say this, is this another one of those, uh, seems like people now have the card they pull out of the pocket, the Russians did it, it's collusion? Yeah, it seems to be the go-to, you know, talking point for the left, for any reason, for whatever it is. I mean, if it's the Manafort trial, it's he did it with the Russians and the Ukrainians. If it's an election deal, the Russians broke into this. When in fact, we know that the CIA and NSA has programs in its possession that they use and are operational under the name of Vault 7 that can hack into any other um, computer system, you know, with, with similar, you know, with, with the ability, let me just say, to be breached because a lot of these computer systems have to be breached. So they use little phishing scams and they, they find somebody that will click the link and then they're in. And the, and the, and the ploy or the, the reason why the U.S. government does this is because, you know, they want to, you know, make sure that our enemies aren't plotting against us. But it's something that now we're finding that the intel community and these establishment or, you know, deep state types, if you like, uh, they, they can't control the people any longer because now we have the internet and people are out there listening at different points of view, doing a little more research to figure out what's going on. So now they're down to having to... Uh, to meddle in our own elections. And this is what Mr. Dennis Montgomery has stated. I talked to him in 2013 about this program, but I couldn't get it confirm, you know, any kind of confirmation on this. So I didn't really run with it, but now he's um, under um, some sort of immunity deal with the US government. He's talking about it. And he's talking about how the US government is the one that's actually hacking into the election system, the US election system, among others, I'm assuming. Well, at least you know it's not a, uh, what do you say, in a, a, a hanging chat. Yeah, yeah. It's not that this time, uh, apparently. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you. It, I wonder why it's always Florida. I mean, you know, Florida, Florida, Florida. Hey, listen, uh, going to take our break, and then we'll come back and continue with this uh, fabulous report. And uh, if you have any questions for Kimberly on this subject, uh, just uh, go to Facebook, look up 
Type him in. We'll talk about him. Yeah, B-V-O-R-A-K. You can put it right in there and she'll read it. But don't use any really big words, all right? <laughs> oh, gosh, you're bad. And uh, <laughs> anyway, well, what did I add? Yes. Oh, it is thekdreport.com. That's thekdreport.com for all her excellent stories. We'll be right back. Oh, Christ, every day. Actually, back in 2013, right after the Michael Hastings uh, car accident, uh, and he oh, was yeah. the Rolling Stone reporter that died mysteriously in a car accident in Los Angeles. Shortly after that, Dennis reached out to me through CW in San Diego and said that he had some information that he was um, trying to obtain whistleblower status and that he was a contractor with the NSA and the CIA. And so I had I needed to do my due diligence on this. And so I looked into his background and found that he actually won a federal lawsuit, um, was able to walk out with 47 hard drives, over 600 million documents, U.S. government documents. And it kind of highlighted a lot of the different um, contracts that he had done for the U.S. intelligence community. One of them being, and this is before, of course, the 2016 elections, but and before the 2014 midterms, but that they had the ability to go in and hack into, or it's not necessarily hack into the election system. What they do is they go into the database. And for those that uh, weren't listening with us um, last week, I'll just explain briefly. What they do is they're able to go in and download the entire database, take that information out of the system. And then what they do is then they, change the results and figure out, you know, if you if you clicked on one was for Obama, two was for McCain or something along those lines, then they would just flip those votes around and they would do that so they could ensure what the vote count would be coming out of a large state like Florida. And because, you know, they go after Florida too, if you remember, Chuck, that they are, it's, you know, one of the first states that gets announced. So, you know, Florida wins is usually, you know, for the West Coast, it just means now it's going to be a domino effect. So this is what the, the this is what his claim was. And now that we fast forward here to 2018, he's now gained some immunity and he does have another lawsuit against the government. And he's just simply trying to let the American people know that it's not necessarily, though he, he won't say that it was you know not Russia and not China and that it's for sure the United States. He's just saying that that he, was part, he participated in one such operation, so he knows the U.S. intel community can do something like that. And we've, we kind of saw what they did with the last Israeli um, election cycle as well. So we do know that they have this capability. And I just think that, you know, the deep state, the, the establishment, what better way to control, you know, what happens in Washington, D.C. than to control the vote? And since you can't really control all the people now, that's not a guaranteed factor because Hillary was supposed to win in a landslide. Um, now they're figuring out different ways to go in so they can keep control. And interesting, uh, I guess, is he the one that brought up these two well-known names, uh, James Clapper, yep. uh, Obama's former director, CIA, John Brennan. Uh, boy, he's in the headlines, isn't he? And James Comey. This, was the, this information was given directly to James Comey and sometimes when you're doing these investigations, and this is what attorneys have told me that are, you know, government attorneys, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll take the information. And this information, let's keep in mind, has been given to um, the Judicial Committee with uh, you know, Mr. Grassley, who's the chairman of that committee. This has been given out. And, you know, some people on the right are saying they're just holding off on releasing the information until after the midterm election. And others are saying that, you know, the, the usual cause for taking the information is they can label it an ongoing investigation. Now the government can no longer uh, discuss it and they can no longer, you know, give the media any kind of answers as to questions that we're seeking on this. And it basically shuts down 
any any outside networks looking in to try to figure the system out and it's a way the government uses or an, just another way that they use to shut down an investigation shut down the the talk about it because if we're really truly worried about our elections then this is what we should be concerned about and i joked about the you know the hanging chats i believe in the story this week but i think that you know maybe it may be best to go back to regular old you know you fill out your name on your 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 ballot and you you leave it in but they keep they keep a hard copy so if there's any kind of question it takes a lot of time but then you know that it's a true election you know it is amazing uh the whistleblowers you know they you want them to come forward but boy they you know they're getting them they're getting the message hey watch out because you know it's not that easy we're going to get you and Montgomery, uh, I see where uh, he's talking to uh, uh old friend of mine, Larry Clayman. Yeah, Larry Clayman was the, uh, the guy who invented uh, Judicial Watch, believe it or not. Yep. Then he ran for office, so he had to get out of that. But uh, I guess Clayman's going to come in there and help him out. I, boy, I hope that works. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's actually, you know, it's kind of, like I said, it's a, a bit of a crapshoot at this point. I think that, again, that the information and the lawsuit was, uh, granted, you know, they were able to move forward with it, which they crossed a hurdle um, in the legal system so they could actually move forward with this. But we haven't seen anything. We haven't seen Larry talking about this story any longer. You haven't seen Dennis Montgomery come out and talk about this anymore. It's been about four months of relative quiet. And, you know, of course, this is, like I said, it goes back to being an ongoing investigation. And this has got to frustrate Larry Clayman, because he's a really good attorney, yet he knows the games that they're playing, and he doesn't also he doesn't want to you know taint the, the the evidence of this case because you know this is what the American people really need to learn what is going on uh, behind the scenes and how power is taking you know normal people that just want to you know work for the country and do good things and turning them into you know they're power hungry and they want to keep that power and continue to get wealthy. They're actually the, the, you know, a lot of these people, they came to DC with no money and now they all leave and they're all millionaires. And, you know, it's kind of hard to walk away from something like that. Even these senators who are in their sixties and seventies, they don't want to walk away from it because they have that power and that, that greed that keeps them going. So, the, you know, if, if the American people were to really learn, what is going on here. They'd be very shocked. I think they'd be very disappointed. And I think our allies would be pretty disappointed as well. Well, you know, today uh, they have the big campaign. Let's uh, get all the mainstream media newspapers to publish uh, uh, editorial about how bad Trump is. And there's, right now, the last count, there's like 300 of them. Yeah. <clears throat> so, you know, when Trump says, well, they're the enemy, and then you see that uh, I think the Washington Post is one that started the whole thing. I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, and you got Boston 300 Globe, I think. newspapers, you know, following their lead. Yes, Master, what do you want us to do here? Yeah. Uh, let me yeah. see. Uh, yeah, I love your show, Kimberly. Glad to see you live. Uh, yeah, she didn't fall off the law. So <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> uh, what about David Nunez? Uh, How's that going? I mean, he's trying to bring people forward that are really going to have to yeah. testify. Um, I, I think that he's probably the most honest broker of the bunch. You remember, he came in on the Tea Party wave in 2010, and he's from Central California, and he's you know a really he seems like he's a pretty good guy. I know the left is really going after him on on absolutely everything he brings out. Um, but he's also cognizant that if the midterms don't go the way of the GOP, then they will start impeachment proceedings against the president. And it's my understanding, I have not spoken personally with him on this topic, but it's my understanding from talking to a few other people that he really wants this information out, but he doesn't want to taint the election um, it, coming up here in the next couple months because that could backfire on them and that he's looking to in the new year bring this forth get Dennis in front of the committees for you know hearings that the public can see and we can learn a lot more about what's going on and, and another person that's actually kind of backing Dennis on this uh, is Mr. William Binney 
and he was a former NSA um, director, and he like gave he he walked away from the NSA because he was so astonished that the government was intruding onto American civil rights on a daily business, you know, daily basis, listening to our our phone calls, watching, you know, who we're emailing, reading our emails, all of these things that used to require uh, warrants from judges. And, you know, he addressed that situation with um, people, you know, the cabinet members, and nobody seemed to, too much, to care too much about it. So he walked away from that. And he's since been pretty vocal on a lot of these different, um, you know, U.S. intelligence operations that he, he believes because he's seen these programs. He helped create these programs that, you know, that they're, they're not doing things that are necessarily for the better, betterment of the United States taxpayer or citizens here. And he feels that there's a lot that, that's going on. And we always say this. I mean, we always say, like, okay, well, our guy, he's not a bad guy. You know, we, we just, it's okay that he does it. But, you know, who knows if the next guy is going to be Hitler? We don't know that. So, I mean, once you start doing this, you set precedent. And once precedent is is established, then you've got a whole bunch of green lights for people who want to go out and control certain situations, control the narrative of an, of an argument, control how an investigation plays out in front of the TV cameras. So his name was uh, Jennings, right? Benny, Benny, William Benny with a B. Okay. Yeah. And uh, is he the one, or was it Montgomery that told you about Vault Seven? No, Vault Seven came out. That was a WikiLeaks um, operation. They were able to get the information from um, a young man who was also, I believe, in his late twenties, who's going through uh, the legal system. He was arrested by the U.S. government, and he's going right now, going through. Um, you know, a legal battle for his life and will most likely spend the rest of his life in prison for releasing this uh, information about the U.S. government. He, he just had, he went in and did virtually what uh, Bradley Manning or Chelsea Manning um, did and was able to get a lot of files out of headquarters and then, you know, saw that this was damning information for the United States government, and he released it. In, in this case, it was released to WikiLeaks so they could get the word out that they, yeah. even if you're watching TV on your your Samsung TV, they can turn it on and there's cameras and they can spy on you using your your TV. That's so that's I mean, it's it's unbelievable. Yeah. It, it's unbelievable. It, it is, and I think that if most Americans actually really knew what was going on, then they would just be like, no way. There's just no way that that should be happening. But it does happen, and they count on the the mainstream media to actually, you know, cover or carry their water, and they do every single day. You know, and uh, I want to tell the listener, you know, uh, Kimberly's uh, source, Montgomery, all right, uh, talked about in this report 20 million, 20 million American identities were illegally unmasked. Now you'll say, well, I don't have anything to worry about. Whether well, unmasking credit reports, uh, emails, phone conversations, internet traffic, and I know none of you send emails or get on the internet, you know, or, or pay any credit reports. Uh, yeah. But don't you think, you know, that that they should have something on you before they even, you know, get a see a, a vice. A, what, what is it called? A, a, a doc? No, you have the dossier, which yeah. then you get the FISA agreement. Report. Yeah, get one of those. Yeah, get a FISA agreement before they spy on you. How well, about that? it's, you know. But then again, that's not hard to do, is it? No, <laughs> this, yeah, they grant almost 100% of the FISA, but the FISA is to spy on a, a on a U.S. citizen. That's what they use the FISA um, courts for. But, you know, going back to, you know, not having anything to hide, you know, right now they're actually the, the, you know, DOJ, I mean, they, they in essence have carte blanche to whatever information. They could go and they can call up your bank and say, hey, we're looking at this person. Can you please give us the details of their bank account? We want to see their last six months. And without a warrant, they're getting that. Now, in this country, we have a constitution. We have a bill of rights. And you're presumed innocent, you know, until proven guilty. And what's happened since 9-11 is, you know, it was an event it was a catalyst to bring all these people together, and people will go, well, if you don't want you, you don't want us to spy on you, we're not doing it for you, but we're just trying to prevent against the next terrorist attack. 
Well, in essence, when you start doing that, we don't have the rule of law any longer because, you know, not everybody is going to be a good, upstanding person. There are bad apples out there. Do you really want to trust the government with your information? What if somebody was murdered and they need a fall guy for it? This type of operation makes it very easy for somebody to plant information on you and in your computer or in your financial records because they have access to it. It makes it very easy for the government to do that. That's a scary world. That's 1984 George Orwell stuff. Yeah, and you know, 9-11, that, uh, as you say, that changed a lot of things. But yeah. they don't really want to just uh, hone in on the fact that there were 19 foreigners Mm -hmm. using 19 aliases that uh, probably shouldn't have been in the United States because maybe their visas had run out or whatever. Yeah. But any other reason that they can open up another way to spy on United States citizens, mm -hmm. you know, they took advantage of it. And uh, yeah. it's amazing how they can shift the whole main scenario, isn't it? Yeah, You're and right? it's very, and it's very, it's, it's a really sad, I think when, history looks back at, at this period, they're gonna it's gonna be it's gonna reflect poorly on how we handled this as a country and how we strayed so far away from our founding fathers and you know the the great nation that we are despite the left, Mr. Cuomo there in New York saying America was never great. Yeah. You know, we, we no, not only were we right. great, we back are great. Like, uh, Backtracking <laughs> like crazy on that one right now, though, today yeah. is. That's a deplorable comment. Take our final break here. Yeah. Take our final break and then we'll be right back. She's going to dance on, uh, on Facebook during this uh, break, and you don't want to miss that. Her last name is spelled D V O R A K. Kimberly Dvorak. And you can read her excellent reports at thekdreport.com. That's thekdreport.com. Get ready for that dance. <laughs> just looking at the Drudge Report and there's a story that just popped up on there in, in California where um, it's a very liberal state and uh, it, a new investigation by the Electronic Frontier Foundation has revealed that the U.S. government has been tracking, they call them these LPRs, license plate readers, and it's in California there's a law stating that the government can't track or trace people's license plates without you know, going to the courts first and getting a warrant to do it. And now we're learning here in California, they're doing it without getting any kind of warrants whatsoever. So this is, again, this is another one of those intrusive measures that government agencies, in essence, I mean, they're unelected bureaucrats who are usually there for life. Yeah, you know, this is how they're getting, going about and getting their information. So it's happening um, across the board and even in California where, you know, it's a pretty liberal state and something like this usually wouldn't fly. Um, the the government's you know taking these license plate readers and following you around. And they can put a trail together and and you know figure out what your daily activities are like. You know this is again a very scary thing. Our election is a very sacred, you know, rite of passage yeah. for people. And right now you've got record low numbers. People don't really think much of the government right now. They really don't like the intel committee. They really really don't like journalists. And there's a reason for it. And the, the reason is there's been a trust that's been broken between those parties and the American people, and they have done nothing to restore their faith in this. And that becomes a very big problem moving forward because you have to trust your government. You have to trust that you're a country and you have to trust that, you know, when you are doing something as simple as just going in and making a vote or casting your vote for a candidate, that it's going to be the vote that you put into the system and it's not going to be changed. Because what, what you have now are a lot of people. And this, you know, the Clintons did this to Bernie Sanders. And a lot of young people said, forget it, I'm never voting uh, again. My vote doesn't matter. Look, they rigged the whole system, you know, towards her. That really undermines the integrity, integrity of this country. And I think it's something we ought to really be worried about. I had a guest on, uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before, Eric Eggers. 
brand new book out. It's called uh, Voter Fraud, yeah. How the Democrats Plan to Win the Next Election. And I'm telling you, very, very serious stuff. Yeah. And when you were talking about, you know, the license, following those licenses, yep. you know, because uh, Kimberly, you know, she hangs out in San Diego all the time, and <laughs> I'm down here anyway. Uh, here, California is a state now that has where you can buy for extra money a license plate where you can send messages, you know, to people behind you or whatever, and people can use it for advertising, all electronically. Yeah. Boy, yeah. another fantastic backwards move. <laughs> yeah, it, it, wow, it, it's astounding that people, because most people will just fall back on that age-old, you know, saying, you know what, I've got nothing to hide. The government can look. Nothing's, yeah. nothing's there, yeah. so don't worry about it. Unfortunately, the problem is that you have to trust that that person's not putting something on your computer, like child porn. You yeah. have to trust that the, well, the government's not doing these things, and we can't right now. I know you're a young, I know you're a young girl, so you probably wouldn't know, but a lot of people have this Schultz, you know, attitude. I have nothing. I know nothing. That it wasn't me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah so here we go. Hey, we gotta take off, Kimberly. All right. uh, Enjoyed our visit again, and uh, I want to tell you, listeners, check out YouTube, check out Facebook, Periscope.com, uh, and above all, go to the KDReport.com and get all of her excellent reports. Looking forward to the next visit, Kimberly. Great. Thanks, Chuck.